direct me to the bailiff's desk, saying I needed to check in with her. So following his instruction, I turned and walked myself to the bailiff's desk. Uh, before I could say anything, the bailiff um, told me, pointed to the uh, bar and said, sir, you see that bar, only attorneys can pass that bar. So I reiterated now for the second time that I am an attorney and uh, I'm here to speak to the clerk about one of my cases that was not on calendar that day. Uh, seeing they weren't listening, I reached in my right back pocket to pull out my bar card. I was able to pull out my wallet, but before I could pull out my bar card, Deputy Barry grabbed me and pushed me over to the gallery area. At that point, I went to walk around Deputy Barry to continue handling my business, and uh, he put his hand up on my chest and pushed me again. I brought my hand up to his to express you my have displeasure. Any and he brought his hand down. Come here, so I'm going to talk to the clerk. No, you, you can't okay? just step up and talk to the clerk. What, what are you here for? I'm an attorney. What I'm an you? officer of the court. I'm okay. here to talk to the clerk. Okay. That's what I'm here what for. What are you here about? To talk about, to the clerk. About what case? Not anyone. I mean, well, it's not, it's not social it. hour with the clerk. Yeah. we got to figure out what you're doing here. No, you can step out. Step out, sir. I'm not going to step out. I'm going to talk to the clerk about the case. You cannot approach the clerk. In Department 7. Why not? Got because that's the rules of the court. Passenger. Do you see that? Do not approach the clerk. Okay. Okay. So step out and I can help you outside. what happened the jury it was only about six seven hours of testimony the jury deliberated for about seven hours and came back with the verdict of guilty for um, removing his hand from my chest and when asked uh, when the two jurors that did speak with me they they told me that it wasn't just me pushing him that delayed me but because I removed his hand that put him on higher alert to me and so when he walked into the uh, vestibule area he neglected his duty by doing that even though no one asked him to do that even though I was told to walk out there and he followed uh, that that delayed him from doing his duty as a custody deputy watching the the custody area despite the fact that I was already um, he was already in the courtroom before I even got there so when you look at those factors uh, that's that's what happened from start to finish and that's how we get here today. Mr. Lynn, did you ever get to show your bar card? No, and in theory, I guess after I, I was pushed, I could have uh, taken it out at that moment, right? And um, But who knows what would have happened. It was, it was dead set in their mind. I was not who I said I was. I was there lying. 
They never gave an explanation on who they thought I was. They just didn't believe, and it's in the record. He said, I didn't believe it for one minute that he was an attorney. And uh, what do you think that based is? on how I was dressed. What do you, yeah, why do you think that is that they didn't believe you were an attorney even though you said it? I'm um, relatively young. Uh, you know, my height and my face make me look a bit younger than I am. I'm 38 years old, was 36 at the time. Uh, I had on camouflage shoes, like moccasin type shoes, red chino pants, and a shirt that was white in the chest area with multicolored red, green, blue, uh, yellow dashiki print on the front and the back. And so in the reports, it was described as tribal clothing. Um, mm. And so they just didn't believe. I think those combination, uh, my race, my clothing, um, despite the words I was using, they just could not see the possibility of this person who, uh, of this race, who's dressed like this, actually being an attorney. And so that's uh, that's my belief on why we're here. The way you describe it, it sounds like it could have just ended with you going in the, into the vestibule, talking it out and figuring out, oh wait, here's a problem, we fixed it. Yeah. How come it became an arrest kind of after that, kind of got out of the courtroom? Well, because Deputy Barry Taste and um, once an officer deploys a taser, if they do that for no lawful reason, that opens up that county to uh, civil liability for excessive force. And so the only way to kind of protect the county from that civil liability was to try and secure a conviction. Uh, but once again, I was convicted for what happened before the taser, so it still didn't absolve the county of the excessive force, um, being that there was no reason for him to tase me. I was standing in the vestibule. I was about four to six feet directly in front of Deputy Sutton. Deputy Barry was about three to four feet to her right and about a foot behind her. So I was uh, not within arm distance of Deputy Barry. I never took a step towards Deputy Barry. The most I did when I read his name tag I leaned over, read it, B-A-R-R-I-E, and then I stood back up, looked back at Deputy Sutton, who was writing down the case number, and then he shot the taser at me. I did not see him shoot it, I heard it. And because my cell phone was in my left hand, my wallet was in my right hand, one of the darts went into my cell phone, both darts needed to go into me for me to feel that shot. But it was uh, ultimately his desire to, um, to put me in my place is how I took it for talking to him that like that how dare I and in his own words after he uh, shot me with the taser and tackled me you hear him say back up don't threaten me and we all heard what the threat was to come after him with everything I have and everything I learned in law school so there's you know Deputy Sutton testified I shouldn't have been arrested or tased uh, she told that, but the prosecution still went forward with the case despite that and despite the case law saying that uh, the First Amendment gives us a right to challenge officers' actions. We don't have to uh, agree with every officer's actions immediately. We can question the officer. And so that's what I did. Everything I did, if I have a First Amendment right, um, was within the First Amendment. And that's why I used words and did not physically respond. Uh, but, you know, Deputy Barry, who is, is a unique deputy, 25 years in the department. He did uh, about 10 years in custody and then 15 years in the courts. He's never done patrol. That's quite unusual. Uh, but if, if he's treating people, because at that moment I wasn't an attorney to him. So if he's treating people like this in public, just imagine what he does if an inmate questions him in lockup. And and that's what uh, I think we should look at in this scenario. Inmates in the San Bernardino County jail system cannot be safe. And that's why, you know, I the trepidation I'd have being that I could get a year in that same county jail with uh, the people he's worked with for the last 25 years. It appears to me that uh